Hi, I'm Caroline. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today. In this video, we are going to talk about selling physical products on Amazon and everything you need to know to see success with this business model in 2023. Selling on Amazon is a really fantastic opportunity and a great online business to start if you are interested in selling physical products. And the reason people love selling physical products on Amazon has a lot to do with the sheer volume of customers that frequently the website every single day buying stuff, as well as the massive membership base that Amazon Prime has. There is something like over 200 million Amazon Prime members, and that figure just continues to grow every single year. And not only that, over 40% of those Amazon Prime members visit the website every single day. And Amazon has a pretty loyal customer base due to the benefits that you do get from being a Prime member. And the fact that Amazon really does what it can to keep the marketplace clean. By that, I mean that they do have measures in place to help stop things like copyright and trademark infringement. They try to stop people from manipulating reviews. They have seller standards. So they have standards for things like when a seller needs to ship orders and basically just making it a place where customers can go and feel confident that they can buy something pretty much risk-free. More than 50% of the products sold on Amazon are sold by third-party sellers. And if you do want to sell physical products on Amazon, there are some things that you need to be aware of to ensure that you don't find yourself on the wrong side of Amazon because they have no qualms about suspending or terminating accounts when people do not follow the Amazon selling rules and guidelines and regulations. First of all, for those who might be familiar with selling books through Amazon KDP and not so much about selling physical products, although books are physical products, they're not in the sense of how we sell them because they aren't an actual product until a customer buys it. I'm talking about actual physical products that you have already purchased before you sell them on Amazon. So yes, this is a different type of account that you set up with Amazon to be able to sell physical products. To be able to do this, you do need to have a seller central account, which is both easy and free to set up. Then there are a few different ways that you can actually go about selling physical products on Amazon. And some of these might vary depending on what country you're in or what country or marketplace that you want to sell these products in. And for the purpose of this video, we'll be talking about selling products on the Amazon US store. So in terms of selling through the US marketplace, one option is that you can sell private label, label products. What this means is that you purchase products from a manufacturer who allows you to put your own brand name on it. Great for if you've always wanted your own branded product line. The next option is by selling through something called retail arbitrage. And what this means is that you go to a retail store, whether you go to that retailer or uh, online or to the actual physical store at your location and you look for products that you can buy cheaper from that retailer and then sell for a higher price on Amazon. For example, if you are in the US, you might go to Walmart and find a product in Walmart for a cheap, cheaper price than what it is selling on Amazon. You purchase that product list it on Amazon for the higher price and make a profit. This works especially well if there is a retailer having some sort of sale or you find the products on clearance and those prices are higher on Amazon. Each different selling method has its pros and cons and which one is best for you is really up to you and the kind of business that you want to have and what things that you want to be focusing your time and attention on. Let's now talk about some of the things that you need to know that you need to watch out for when selling physical products on Amazon to help keep your business and your account in good standing order with Amazon. Now, one thing that you will need to decide is how you are going to get your products that you are selling on Amazon to your customers. You can go about this in two different ways. One is by shipping the products out yourself. This is often referred to as FBM or fulfillment by merchant, you being the merchant. You might choose to do this or something that you might be selling, a particular product, might actually be a restricted or banned product from Amazon's fulfillment service, meaning that you would have to ship this product yourself because Amazon won't do it for you. So this means 
storing that inventory yourself at your home or wherever you choose to store the inventory. When you do sell a product, you would then have to pick and pack that order. And then of course, getting it down to your post office to send it to the customer. You also need to make sure that you are adhering to Amazon's guidelines and timeframes when you need to ship the product out to the customer. It also means that your products are not eligible for prime prime delivery, which also means that your product probably won't be listed in the buy box on the sales page. Now, what the buy box is, it's the person, the product, or the company that's lucky enough to be listed on the sales page as the main seller. But by shipping the items yourself, it also means that you won't be paying any of the Amazon storage fees and you have total control over how your packaging and shipping materials look. So the other option that you have is by having Amazon ship the products for you. And this is called FBA or fulfilled by Amazon. And that's probably the most common term you would hear around selling physical products on Amazon through FBA. So this is where you send your products to Amazon. They store them in their warehouses. And when a customer buys your product, Amazon will go pick it. They will package that product up and send it to the customer for you. It means your product is eligible for prime shipping, which is a great benefit because let's be honest, a prime member is probably not going to buy a product that they have to pay shipping for when there are so many products available to them with free prime shipping. But it does also mean that you will have to give up that control of the packaging, the shipping materials, and how you want it to look. And of course, you do have to pay fees for Amazon storing your products in their warehouse and for fulfilling the orders for you. What it does do though, is it gives you a very hands-off business where you can focus on the important things like designing products or finding and sourcing products and the marketing. The competition on Amazon is fierce, as we all know, but there is also a lot of demand, which is why people find it such an attractive online business. But some people can also be tempted to try to get around those rules and regulations, try to sort of like dupe the system to get ahead of everybody else. This is not the best approach though, because The rules are there for a reason and it's to make it fair for everybody, but most importantly, it is to protect the customer. The way that Amazon works is that there is one sales page per product. So if there is more than one seller selling a particular product, let's say for example, there are 10 sellers selling the same product, there will be one sales page for that product and everybody who sells it is listed as a seller on that page and the customer can choose which person or which seller they buy the product from. But out of those people selling the product, one gets chosen to go into the buy box position. As I just mentioned before, the buy box position is the seller listed on the actual sales page with the buy button below it. So being displayed as the main seller, the most authentic and well-rated seller of that particular product. And that's where people try to use shady tactics to get into that buy box position. But instead of trying to get around this by perhaps doing something like trying to set up a new sales page for the product where you're the only seller listed or misrepresenting yourself or the product, just focus on things like getting the best feedback you can from customers. If you are fulfilling orders yourself, make sure you are doing it on time or use FBA if you are unable to stick to Amazon's guidelines in that sense. Be competitive with your pricing. Do things to reduce the amount of cancelled orders you might be getting. Basically just being the best seller that you possibly can be. And Amazon has metrics for every seller who's meeting or not meeting their regulations and standards. And if you don't meet these metrics, Amazon will suspend your account. Something else that you must avoid doing is selling restricted, prohibited, or banned products. You actually can't sell everything and anything on Amazon. They do have some restrictions and it might seem like common sense, but you might do this unknowingly. You might just do it by accident, not realizing, but it is an easy way to get your account suspended. And every country is different too. So just because a product is allowed to be sold in one particular country doesn't mean it can be sold on the other marketplaces. So make sure to check every product that you want to sell before you start selling it to make sure that you can, because Amazon isn't going to accept that, oh, I just didn't know as an excuse because everything you can and cannot sell is listed on their website. When deciding on what products to sell on Amazon, it's important to do your research on both the product and the manufacturer or the wholesaler you are buying from to make sure that you aren't accidentally selling something that is copyright or trademark protected. Basically selling a knockoff 
don't do it. Doing this is not only against Amazon's regulations, it's also illegal and you can get sued. In fact, a recent video that I did was about Etsy sellers being sued by Disney for selling products using Disney characters and Disney trademarks without authorization. Amazon will not hesitate whatsoever to suspend any seller infringing on trademarks and it's one of the ways that they have built such loyalty with its customers because their customers can trust that when they buy something, they are getting legit, authentic products from the actual brands that they want to buy from. Once you have decided what products you want to sell, your job will be all about building up positive feedback about yourself and about your products because Amazon primarily works on sort of word of mouth type marketing and the trust factor from customers who have purchased a product previously and left their feedback about it. So I'm talking about reviews. You will need reviews and good reviews to make more sales. Customers want to know what to expect about whatever it is they're buying. They want to know that it's good. They want to know that it does what it's meant to. They want to know if it's the right product for them. You might think it's harmless to go out and buy or ask for positive or five-star reviews, especially in the beginning when you just want to get the ball rolling. But Amazon always finds out about it and it always ends badly. Make sure that you go about building that feedback in a way that follows Amazon's regulations around this topic. A lot of people think that they can't ask for reviews whatsoever, which is not correct. You can ask people for reviews on your Amazon products. You just cannot ask for a five-star review or for a positive review. All you can do is ask for an honest review. And by doing that, hopefully you will build up that trust and that proof from previous customers who have bought your product. So this is just a few of the things to think about when selling physical products on Amazon and things to hopefully help you avoid getting in that situation where your account does get suspended and you're selling privileges get taken away from you. There are so many other things that you do need to take into account, too many to fit into this one video, which is why I've only covered a few today. But knowing what you can and can't do and the things that can affect your account is so important to know so that your online business doesn't get stopped in its tracks before it's even started. If you did enjoy the topic of this video and you are interested in learning more about selling physical products on Amazon, then please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up or mentioning something down in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.